What's up? My name is Cody. I'm a staff software engineer. I upload videos to YouTube weekly, and today I want to talk to you about the best programming languages to learn in 2019. All right, so the world of software development is changing all the time. Um, new languages come up, old ones go away. When I first started learning programming, I didn't know what, what language should I learn? What should I devote my time to? Should I learn PHP? Should I learn Ruby? What's the difference between Java and JavaScript? What language do I even learn? And so I'm hoping in this video, I can give some clarity in terms of if I were starting out today, given what I know today, what languages would I be most interested in learning in 2019? Which ones do I think are the best that have the most potential down the line in the future. So first, I want to cover some some ground rules in terms of how I went about developing this this video. Um, that's my cat. I don't know if you can hear her. Her name's Tina, though. She's pretty great. Anyway, so how how did I go about actually building out this uh, this this script for this video? This initial list. I started off by looking at the Stack Overflow 2019 developer survey results, going through some of those languages, seeing like, well, these are good. But then also injecting my own opinion because. I've been able to see some languages really flourish and others that are still kind of up there in the survey results, they're uh, probably not languages that I would, I would recommend learning in, in 2019. Uh, part of it will be factual, hard numbers, and the other part of it will be just my own, own stinking opinion. So let's get started. All right, so number one, um, this one is Kotlin. According to the 2019 Stack Overflow developer survey results. 6.6% .6 of developers are using it professionally today. It's the number four most loved language on their survey. It's the second from bottom in terms of most dreaded programming language, so that's good. It's not at the top of that list. It's the number five most wanted language. So as far as developers that don't currently use Kotlin, there's a lot of developers that want to start using Kotlin. So it has a lot of room for growth. And of course, something that's fairly important with software development is how much money can you make from it? From their survey results, going off of the US salaries, the average salary of a Kotlin developer in 2019 is $125,000, which is not uh, not too bad, not too shabby. So uh, that would be uh, the hard fact. So let's talk about why I think you should um, actually go about learning Kotlin in 2019. Well, the first reason would be there's only 6.6% .6 of developers using it professionally. It's a fairly low number of people that are using it, which gives you a lot of room to kind of leave your mark on the language. Another reason that I would learn Kotlin is it's just a fun language. There's so many features that you have with it. If you like object-oriented programming, it does that great. If you like functional programming, it does that great. If you don't like writing a ton of boilerplate code, it generates a ton of code for you. Data classes save a lot of time. Another thing that I enjoy about Kotlin is the type system itself. So there's this really cool thing called sealed classes. It allows you to build some really neat hierarchies with classes where you can have this clearly defined class structure at compile time, which again, that allows you to cut down on the amount of code you need because if you know exactly how many different subclasses something may have. The compiler can figure out, well, have you gone through every single type of that? On top of that, Kotlin has this thing called smart casting where as soon as you know that a class is a certain type, you don't have to then typecast it. So if you just say this is, and then um, like, let's say we have a person class, from that point on underneath that block of code, you can reference that, that this, the, the thing that you're working with, as a person class, for example. So that's another neat thing. You'll find the more and more that you use Kotlin, they really try to design the language in such a way that you have to write the minimum amount of code to get the most done. And of course, being able to do a lot with a little, it just makes it fun because then you get to spend a lot more time instead of just writing the code and kind of think through the problems that you're working with a little bit deeper. A lot of the type checks that you have, a lot of the, the safety that you get from the language, you don't have to worry about that. So I don't have to worry so much about getting, say, a null pointer exception with Kotlin because for the most part, the compiler will find that and it'll let me know, hey, you're gonna get a null pointer exception. We're not even gonna let you compile this code. Uh, so that's another great thing about Kotlin. I could go on and on about it. Probably will create a, an entire video on Kotlin. Let me know in the comment section below if you would be interested in learning a lot more about just all the cool stuff uh, that you can do with Kotlin. But uh, to avoid that, just becoming like an entire video on that, I should 
probably get to the next part. All right, let's talk about language number two now. That language would be Python. So this is a language that I have not used personally. But let me, let me actually just get to the, the uh, Stack Overflow results first before I give my own opinion. So for one, Python is the fastest growing major language today. About 39.4% of developers are using it professionally in 2019. It's the number two most loved language according to Stack Overflow. Um, it's completely absent from the dreaded language list. So in terms of people that were surveyed by Stack Overflow, no one actually dreads Python. Uh, it's the number one most wanted language. And in the US, um, train going by, but we'll just power through this. In the US, the average survey of a Python developer is $116,000, which again, not, not at all a bad yearly wage. So as for my own opinion, so like why, why is Python number two on the list? Well, for me, it's really, I mean, it's, it would be a wanted language for me. Um, there's a number of engineers at my company that work in Python. It seems like a great language. I haven't been able to really just find the time to, to work with it. Again, like Kotlin, I, I just, I love that language so much. It's difficult for me to actually just find the time to get away from it. But Python would be the language that I would be learning in a heartbeat. I think another thing that I really enjoy about Python is just the syntax itself. It looks super simple. You don't have to worry about compilation. You just, you write the code, you execute it, it runs, everything's good. So you're, you're able to kind of work with that language a bit quicker than, than say like Kotlin. Like if I have to compile the entire Kotlin project, it's going to take a bit of time. Whereas with Python, if I just need to do something really quick, really simple, you just open up a, a text editor, type in some code that you want to run, execute it, and then everything goes. So one thing I've noticed that a lot of people are using Python for is with uh, like lambdas. So if you're working with serverless technology, so AWS Lambda, Google Functions, Azure, whatever they call them, they may just call them Azure Lambdas, I don't know. Anyway, so so for those like serverless architectures and everything, you would, you would want to use say like Python because it just can be, you can just drop in the file, it can execute and then it goes away. You don't have to worry about standing up entire environments or anything like that. And then I think really the, the last reason that I would give for, for learning Python today is it is just such a popular language. It is probably not going anywhere in the foreseeable future. So if you want a stable language to learn and get a lot of great experience with, Python would be perfect to go with. All right, so number three, let's talk about JavaScript. So from the Stack Overflow uh, survey results, it's used by almost 70% of professional developers, 69.7% to be exact. It's the number 11 most loved language. It's the ninth from the bottom of dreaded languages. It's the number two most wanted language. And in terms of salary, I mean, the United States, the average salary of a JavaScript engineer would be $110,000, which again, not, not bad at all. All right, so why, do, why did I put JavaScript on this list though? So number one, I mean, it's used by basically everyone. So myself included, I don't, I don't write JavaScript on a day-to-day -day basis, but you better believe I can at least read it. I could, I could crank out some working JavaScript. It's just the language that is used pretty much everywhere. So if you're working with a, say, front-end web application, probably going to be written in JavaScript, probably. Even on, on the back end, you have tons of frameworks. So you have like Node that is just running JavaScript on the, on the back end. So it is a very pervasive language in the software development community. And I mean, it's, it's a language that isn't going anywhere anytime soon. You need it for a lot of stuff. That being said, you know, one caveat that I would give about JavaScript is everyone does it. So if you're looking to become an expert in a language and kind of be like that, that go-to person, JavaScript probably is going to take you many, many years to get there. And especially because it is such an established language at this point, a lot of the paradigms are already in place. If you want to be able to have influence over the, uh, the, the language itself as it matures, it's already pretty much matured. So I wouldn't go into JavaScript if you were looking for, say, that language like Kotlin. So that's partly why I don't put a ton of time into JavaScript myself is just because I do want to be able to have a larger impact on a language itself. I want to be able to sort of become that go-to expert in some language. All right, so number four, 
that language would have to go to Go. From the Stack Overflow uh, developer survey results, 8.8% of developers are using it professionally, so it's not used by everyone. Again, it's a, it's a good language that you can kind of become that like niche expert in. It's the number nine most loved language. It's the seventh from the bottom in terms of most dreaded language. It's the number three most wanted language. And then it's $136,000 average salary in the US. Uh, this is the one of the, the highest salaries that I've seen. It is a fairly in-demand language from what I've seen as well. It, it would be a fantastic language to learn in, uh, in 2019. Um, and kind of just so like my, my own general opinion as to why Go made it on this list. Well, I have coworkers that, that are always talking about it. Um, so that's, that's part of it. I can just see that there is not only from the survey results, but from the people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, they want to work with Go. Another one is just from, from hearing uh, other engineers that have worked with Go in the past. It's a super performant language. In fact, it, it was language written uh, with performance in mind. People at Google wanted a language similar to C. They didn't want the overhead of C++. And so that's sort of where Go came from. It's built to be very performant. They handle a lot of memory allocation for you, but it's still used in systems where performance is top priority. And yeah, so really like Go is, is a hard language for me to try to dissuade anyone from learning. Uh, as to why I'm not using it myself, it's also not really a language that I would necessarily be learning today. Um, it's partly because I think for software in general, you want to learn different pillars of languages. And so one of them would be like a compiled language that's going to execute very quickly, will, will uh, perform really well. And so for that, Kotlin already fills that for me. Another one would just be a language that I can, you know, write some code, have it execute. And so like a general scripting language. And so for that, Python would be the language that I would be most likely working with if I, if I needed that. If, if I didn't already know Kotlin and I wasn't already so sold into it, Go would be the language that I would be learning to fill that sort of like performance heavy aspect of, of software engineering. All right, so number five, um, this language is C Sharp. I get the feeling maybe that's gonna be controversial, maybe it's not. Um, let me know in the comments actually, do you hate that C Sharp is even on this list? Um, I, I was a little hesitant to put it on there, but anyway, it's 31.9% of professional developers are using it, according to Stack Overflow. It's the number 10 most loved language. It's eighth from the bottom for dreaded languages. It's the number 11 most wanted language. Um, so much so, I mean, there's like literally trains of people um, just trying to come and learn about, about C Sharp. Average salary in the US is $105,000 for C Sharp developers, so again, not too shabby. So C Sharp, why, why do I think it's controversial? Well, it's kind of just uh, that language that's been around for a while. I feel like a lot of people end up enjoying it. It's a language that I used for a little bit uh, when I was working at a uh, digital agency out in Milwaukee. It was a good language. Actually, a lot of the features uh, that I enjoy in, in Kotlin, like having uh, Magic, Gitter, and Setters, that was something that C Sharp had. And so it's uh, it's a good language. There's a it's a mature language. On top of that, there's a lot of people using it. There's a good demand for it still. I do think it is starting to become more of a niche. Like um, people that would be doing stuff in C Sharp are most likely deploying to Windows servers. Windows servers are becoming less and less popular, at least from what I can see. And so with that, like it's it's a language that. I still think it's great to learn, but in terms of the other languages on the list, I would probably look at those first before going to C Sharp, if that makes sense. All right, so number six. Um, yeah, so I think I, I said this was gonna be a you know top five video, but it's hard for me to, to do this video and, and completely leave out, say, like iOS development. So number six would have to be Swift. Um, if you wanna become an iOS engineer, kind of want to learn Swift. There's really no way around it. So um, just some, some statistics. In terms of professional developers using it, it's about 6.8%. It's the number six most loved language, fourth from the bottom for dreaded languages. 
number 13 most wanted, and average salary is about $120,000 a year in the United States. Train. And another great thing about Swift that, that I enjoy personally is Swift and Kotlin are, are very similar. And so once you learn one, it's not that you completely know the other, but I've written at least bad Swift code that executes and runs really just because I, I understand how Kotlin works and I've been able to show Kotlin code to my iOS colleagues and they've been able to read it perfectly fine, I think. It's a good language to, to learn, especially if you're doing iOS development. All right, well, that wraps up this video. Um, it's a heat wave here in Chicago, so I'm excited to turn the air conditioner back on. But thank you uh, for watching this video. Let me know if uh, which language you're gonna go out and learn. Um, are you gonna learn none of languages on the list? Do you, did you completely disagree with it? Let me know in the comments below. Would love to read your thoughts. Uh, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Um, let me know it sucked because I want to put out content that you, you want to watch. Subscribe, click the notification bell, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.